Well, on the lift is a familiar but not forgotten face, the Bandit 1200. So this thing needs a clutch. Slips ever so slightly if you're really, really on it in like second gear, maybe trying to clutch it up. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but that might be the scenario in which it happens. But anyway, I went ahead and got a Barnett clutch for this thing. And because we're gonna be draining the oil anyway, we're gonna be replacing it. So oil filter, and then I also have a clutch cover gasket. So you can hear it crackling right now. I just got this thing up to temperature. So let's go ahead and get this thing lifted up and get the oil drained. Okay. Nothing on the magnet. Very clean oil. Oh, oh boy. thrust washer and then our roller bearing. All right, that's staked right there. So I'll get a chisel, kind of push that back, get it cleaned up, and then should be able to take the impact and just knock that off. All right, I got my 30 millimeter socket right here. No holding tool, should be able to crack this loose. Good.
know what they say, glove before clutches. All right, we are ready to assemble the clutch. I have all of the necessary components cleaned up. Use the solvent tank. So we're gonna place the uh, actual discs, the steels, the frictions, and our concave uh, spring here. So all of this comes from Barnett as a kit. I picked this up from Revzilla. Now I pointed out earlier, you will note that the clutches have two different widths on the friction. So your thin one is what's gonna go first on the actual basket. And there are two washers right here that you gotta be mindful of. So they go around that. And then we start stacking. Now I've had these clutch discs soaking for probably a little bit over an hour at this point. I don't think there's any need to get them soaking like overnight or, or anything like that. Just get them saturated. Carefully get this guy set on like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and reposition the camera so we can get the uh, wave washers and the retainer on. All right, now with the basket stacked, I went ahead and added some oil to our new wave washers. And I have my three screws here along with the retainer on the ready. So what we need to do is insert this into the basket. So we have the basket here and we're allowed to move all of these. So let's go ahead and get this thing set down in here very carefully. Make sure that's seated. And then from here, we're gonna insert the wave washers. And we have the retainer. Line up three holes. Then this is a number one JIS screwdriver. I'm gonna make sure you don't use anything else. So we're gonna get that started. Get this one started. And finally the third. So what I'm gonna do is just, I'm tightening this until it just barely touches and gets a little bit of tension. Then I'm gonna to move to the next one. And the next one, these are just tiny little screws. I wanna make sure I don't mess it up. I'll tighten that one a little further and work my way around. Okay. So we have those seated. We are good. Now we can install this back in the bike. All right, now we're going to fish our entire basket back in here. Now we do have our thrust washer on this. Our bearing is where it needs to be. So this inner piece here really just helps align the basket. That way we can reinstall it in this. So we have three sets of teeth to line this up with. Our oil pump, our starter, and then of course the crankshaft. I can actually spin the oil pump gear right here, make sure that's in. And then our starter gear. 
There we go. Spin that, and we know we are set up in here. Now it's time for the basket. Make sure you got your thrust washer. At this point, I fought aligning the clutch basket with the input shaft of the transmission a little bit more than anticipated. What I should have done is actually left the spring retainer a little bit loose, that way it had a little bit of wiggle in there, and then tighten it up on a later stage. This was actually done for assembly purposes at the factory, and I'm assuming that they used a jig with an actual input shaft to line everything up, making assembly easier, which is not the case for me. I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing here. This thing's making me feel dumb. Well, that's what we needed, I guess. Just do as I do, not as I say, you know? <sighs> I was under the impression that you set this up in the basket, you tighten this down, and then it allows for easier installation onto the crank. But everything was offset just a little bit. So that's just the slack you have in the basket with the plates and the, and the frictions. So I was definitely wrong. Anyway, after this, we have another washer, and then we get the nut on this thing. Pain in the butt. And of course, I'm gonna tighten this the way I loosened it. So it's actually right back to where it was. I'm gonna take a hammer and uh, kind of repeen it here. Okay. All right, now it is time. A little push rod assembly here. Our C clip. There we go. Assembled. All right, ready to put the cover on. I'm going to put just a touch of ultra gray right here where the joint of the cases is. Just make sure the gasket seals right there. I've already gone and cleaned out all of the holes with compressed air, so we're good there. And now, we can get our gasket on. All right, put some oil in this thing and we are good to go. Now here's the question. Can I pour a bag of oil into here? 
Oh, look at that. That's nice. Let's get extra risky right now. Ooh. Maximum com concentration. Now we're getting at like awkward angles. Okay. Uh, however many CC's freezer is. Oh, <laughs> I haven't changed the filter yet. <laughs> I don't know how much I got in it. We might, we, we might be good. <laughs> oh, oh man. We have to be quick, fast, and in a hurry about it. Okay, how fast can we do this with speed and precision? Drain pan under our tin foil. That looks like reasonably new oil. Man, this is not a good showing of my mechanical abilities in this video. I forget to change the the oil filter before adding some oil. I can't seem to put the clutch on. Just, what is wrong with me? All right. the bandit right now and we are just kind of getting this clutch bore in a little bit testing it out and it does feel good one thing I was surprised about is the lever feel I think I was expecting it to be maybe a little bit firmer but at the most I would say it's about five percent difference in being maybe a little bit more stiff it's nothing you know hardly anything at all now granted it is hydraulic system so that's not gonna have as much of an effect on the lever but still I just thought it'd be more. But yeah, we are out cruising. I got Seth behind me on the VMAX. We're just having a little fun. This thing definitely is fast. VMAX ran out of gas. Somehow, I don't know, I was gonna push it and then Seth is like hops in and just starts pushing. This is tricky. This is tough. Ugh. Arrow 
Dynamesis. We got the green light. What? Yeah. All right, I'm pushing. All right, I won't argue this time. <laughs> this one is, this one is on me. Okay. This concludes the test of our clutch. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Okay. It's not us. No, it's not. Well. That was fun. Something like that. The bandit is always thirsty. As we wrap this one up, I'm gonna leave you guys with some riding footage. This video is about one-third ASMR, one-third how-to, and one-third motovlog, but it was 100% Brickhouse builds. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.